The Resident Evil franchise has endured for 25 plus years with great games to back up this series. Today, I'd like to talk to you about one game in the series with memories and nostalgia for me. That game, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Growing up, I wasn't a survival horror fan like I am today, but something about this game felt different. It felt like a balance of action and horror. You have your standard zombie shooter mechanics with great Resident Evil style monsters, but this time you have the Terminator of monsters following you, the Nemesis. My buddy and I had fun with this game and took turns renting it from the video store alternating weekends with it. He'd take it for one weekend, I'd take it for the next. Also we'd hook up ye olde VCR and record our progress to show each other. We both had the same reaction though when Nemesis crashes into the RPD building. Yikes Scooby! <laughs> As we played, we both got stuck at the same point after the RPD building segment. Neither of us could figure out what to do and was stumped. For giggles, I dove into the instruction manual and found my answer. Boy, we felt stupid afterwards. After we made it past this part, we continued our back and forth rental agreement until we completed the game. This was a great Resident Evil game in both of our minds, and I was excited in 2020 when I learned of the remake on the horizon. When I picked up the 2020 remake, I was excited at first to see my boy Nemesis in stunning modern graphics. I look forward to exploring Raccoon City with better detail and modern gameplay mechanics. I charged through the game and made my way through the New Game Plus mode a couple times. I even tried doing some speedrunning, which you can see here. After I had all the fun that I wanted to have with the game, something felt off for me as I hung up the game for a couple weeks. Where the hell was the rest of the city? I thought this to myself when I sat down and played the OG version of the game. Where was the downtown? Where was the clock tower? Where was the city park? The waste treatment plant? Where was everything? Upon realizing this, I was bummed that the game that got me into the series in the first place was being remade had so much cut content. Hell, even the damn mercenaries mode would cut. Another thing that bothered me was the buildup for Nemesis. In the original Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, you have this buildup for a monster that is hunting down all the stars members. You even corner Brad in a bar and he says he's coming for us which puts you as the player on alert that something monstrous is heading and coming your way. The police aren't trained for this kind of situation. What could they do? Listen, he's coming for us. We're both gonna die. What are you saying? You'll see. He's after stars members. There's no escape. <gasps> Jill! Jill! Brad! We've gotta... Jill! Help! No! And then you get to the RPD, and Brad meets his demise, and you meet the monster nemesis right there in the entryway to the RPD building. And then you explore the RPD with, a par with an increasing paranoia looking over your shoulder wondering when this big monster is going to crash through. And then just when you think you're about ready to escape and make your way out of the RPD building, nemesis crashes through the window and puts you on high alert right there. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe there'll be DLC to flush out more of the city. I was upset when I learned that all there was was RE Resistance. Big whoop de doo A game nobody asked for! Another thing that made me scratch my head with the RE3 remake release with Resident Evil Resistance is, why do we have a Resident Evil multiplayer game? Resident Evil has always been a single player affair. I know multiplayer games are the trend right now, but not every franchise needs to be multiplayer. Hell, if Resident Evil wanted to go multiplayer, they could remake Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City, they could do a proper remake for RE5. So I kicked back and relaxed until Resident Evil Village launched and my itch for creepy exploration was scratched. Still, I held out hope that maybe RE3 Remake would have some DLC and nothing. An offense that's hard for me to overlook is that they screwed up Jill's final line where she says, if you want stars, I'll give you stars. She says it at the beginning of the game. You're supposed to save that line for the end when you finish off the monster, woman. You want stars? 
I'll give you stars. You want stars? I'll give you stars. Also, I lost count of how many times Nemesis had Jill dead to rights. All he could have done was just grab her by her skull and squish her dead and game over. But, you know, she has to have that lovely main character armor to stay alive. But just as many times as Nemesis had her dead to rights, they should have done something with those scenes. Now I know we have the RE4 remake out now and it's awesome. There's a rumored RE9 in pre-development and the way RE4 remake ended, the road points towards a remake for RE5 or Code Veronica next, which I will admit here, I never played Code Veronica. I didn't have the Dreamcast and I didn't know Code Veronica existed until recently. Now there's nothing wrong with this, I just wish that RE3 remake would get the love it deserves before this generation of gamers forgets that the original version exists. Till next time my friends, this is Grim Koopa signing off. Off.